Good evening, good evening, guys. I hope we are all doing well and welcome to day four of our Vision Traders Network Bootcamp. Um, we are just about to start now. Thank you for, for your presence here. We are going to be having another speaker today, a very, very, um, very elite trader by the name of Pasta Havila, um, AKA I Snipes. And he's going to be taking us through the topic of types of analysis, as well as basic candlesticks, candle patterns, as well as market structure. So I hope all of us have um, our notebooks open and ready to jot down, guys. Just remember for me that if you have any questions, please don't speak. Just write it down. You can write it on the chat box or write it down on a piece of paper. Once we are done with the presentation, we'll treat the questions. So thank you again and welcome, welcome. And over to you, Pastor Havila. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I want to believe we're all doing fine and great. It's a privilege to be here, and I'm not taking this for granted. Is I want to be sure that you guys can hear me. So I just keep on talking and talking without any effect. Can you all hear me, please? We can hear you clearly, clearly, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Someone can't hear. Samuel Jacob, you can't hear. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. So, we have a lot of things to do today. So, let's just dive in straight to what we have today. But before I do that, I want to appreciate Coach, Coach Musti. Thank you very much for putting up such an amazing innovation like this together to bless the lives of people thank you very much and thank you for having me here also it's a privilege like i said the other time and i do not take it for granted thank you very very much so going straight to what we have for tonight uh, i've been instructed to to have a session on uh forex analysis and then my, my own part is basically divided into um, four um, the types of analysis that we have, the chart patterns, and then um, candlestick patterns, then market structure. Let me repeat again the types of analysis we have. That's types of analysis. Then uh, the chart patterns the candlestick patterns and uh, the market structure. But because of the the uh, the uniqueness of the candlestick patterns, I will, I will take it with the market structure. So this session will now be divided into three. As a result of this, I'm taking the candlestick pattern with the market structure. So we have the types of analysis, the candlestick, the chart patterns, the market structure and the candlestick patterns. Okay, so um, the type of analysis, I, I will just brush through this place. My, my major discourse for this night is market structure. So I will just brush through all the other things that we have. That's the first and the second. Then I will, I will spend more time on, uh, I'll spend more time on the market structure and the candlestick patterns. So I'm diving straight into what we have today. The types of analysis. Well, I want to share my screen so that you guys can see. Uh, there we go. Hold on, please. Um, coming.
and come in peace. Okay, can we all see this, please? My 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 new tab. Can we all see it? Yes, it's very clear, sir. Okay, so because what I want to discuss is not something complicated and it's not something so serious. I mean, the types of analysis. So I will just use um, the definition that we all can have access to, to make it more easier and more flexible for us to grab. So we basically, we have two types of analysis in the Forex markets. We have the technical analysis and we have the fundamental analysis. These are the two basic, uh, these are the two basic types of analysis that we have in the first market. That's why you see some first traders, they will tell you that, okay, I'm a, I'm a technical, uh, I'm a technical forex trader. Some people will say I'm a fundamental forex trader. You may not understand what they are trying to say by, by dividing or trying to um, differentiate themselves from one another. But with what we'll be having, with, with what we'll be discussing this night, you'll be able to see what differentiates the two traders from each other, a technical trade trader and a fundamental trader. So basically, what does technical analysis mean? A technical trader is a trader that makes use of technical analysis in his trading endeavor. Let me repeat that again. A technical trader is a trader that makes or adopts the technical analysis to inform or take his first decisions. Why a fundamental trader is a trader that adopts the use of fundamental analysis to arrive at his decision and conclusion about the forex market. But if you don't know what this technical and fundamental analysis, if you don't know what they really mean, it will be difficult for you to know the kind, the exact kind of trader that these traders are, the technical traders and the fundamental traders. So technical analysis, what does technical analysis mean? I would like to use this Investopedia definition so straight. Can we see my, my new tab? Yes, yes, we can see it, sir. You can see my, the, the one that I just opened now. Yes, the black one, yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. So lo just look at the what I'm highlighting here. It's so simple and, you know, it's just so straightforward. What is technical analysis? Technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify trading opportunities. Now, for, for those that are new to the forex market, just take your eyes off this evaluate investment. As you progress in your forex journey and as you gain mastery, you will know what this actually means. But this is a very, very simple English. Identify trading opportunities. Very simple. So a technical trader, a technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from trading activity. Statistical trends gathered from trading activities such as price movement and volume. Let me go again. Technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investment and identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from trading activities such as price movement and volume, meaning Technical analysis makes use of the trend, the historical data of the market to predict the future. So a technical analyst will now go back to history, will now go back to what has happened. For example, if you are analyzing GU, GBB, USD, you go back to what has happened before. When you go back to what has happened before, you see the trend, you see the formation, you see the pattern. You see how things are done before. It will give you a perspective of what will happen in the future. And because of the several innovations that have been coming up, 
there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of indicators that has been designed and well programmed to help you in this aspect. So every MT4 or MT5 comes with their own indicator. And the purpose of this indicator is to help is to shorten your journey to um, relating the past to the future. So it will help you, it will help you, um, it will help you, um, it will go into the past of that asset that you are analyzing. It will go into the past of that currency that you are analyzing. And based on the movement, the price movement of that asset or currency, previously, the indicator will now help you to predict what can happen in the future. There are also different trading concepts that have been attached to this technical analysis that makes it um, that makes it um, independent from the um, indicators available. So you can be a technical uh, trader and not make use of indicators. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, the fact that you're a technical trader doesn't mean you make use of indicators. It doesn't mean it do, it's not compulsory. You can use your 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 knowledge of the market. There are technical terms. There are technical concepts that you can um, learn that will make you forget about indicators and then focus on your interpretation of price movement, your interpretation of um, price pattern, your interpretation of what is happening in the market, your understanding of what is happening in the market to predict the future. So am I saying, am I saying indicators are bad? I'm not saying indicators are bad, but not every trader can make use of indicators. Not every trader can make use of indicators. If you can sit down and learn what the indicators can do for you, then you can you can be better than you you produce a better result than what the indicators will do for you. So a technical trader, a technical analysis, a technical trader is a trader that makes use of the historical data of the assets or the currency to predict the next movement of that asset or currency. I hope we are I, I hope I hope we're on the same page. I hope we are getting what, what I'm trying to share with us. So that's that on technical analysis. So let, let's 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 go to fundamental analysis now. I don't want to dwell much on this. So that's we don't we don't just waste time. Now, fundamental analysis. Like I said, a fundamental trader is a trader that makes use of fundamental analysis to inform or make his decision about the forex market. So, what is fundamental analysis? It's usually called F. It's a method of measuring the security intrinsic value by examining related economic and financial factors. So, for example, if 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 you are trading the gpb usd now you are 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 looking at what is happening to the pounds and what is happening to the usd in terms of their economic benefits in terms of their economic strengths in terms of the financial factor that surrounds these two currencies this is what will now make you this is what will help you to take your decision about either selling GU or buying GU or staying out of GU. So fundamental analysis, they study anything that can affect the security value from macroeconomic factors such as the state of the economy, like I said the other time, the state of the economy, the industry condition of that particular region that you are trading their currency. So for example, if, if, you have, if you are trading USD now and then something is happening in the US, you know it will affect the movement of that currency, USD. So it will help you to take your decision about what to do to that currency. Are you buying USD? Are you selling USD? Are you staying out of it? There are times that there won't be a, a definite decision. You won't be able to make a definite decision based on the news that has been released or based on what you are seeing about the economic factor of that territory that uses that currency that you're about to trade. 
And they are telling that you just stay out of it. That okay, since this is what I've been receiving, since this is the news that is out. This is the thing happening to their economic strength. This is their economic strength. This is what is happening to them at this particular point in time. It's better for me to just stay out of this place. And then you just leave USD like that. So fundamental analysis looks fundamental analysis looks at the economic factor of that that uh that country that you are trading the currency. So that's simply what these uh these uh types of analysis is all about. There are two different types of analysis. We have the technical analysis and we have the fundamental analysis and like i said the technical analysis makes use of makes use of the historical data of that particular asset or currency that you are trading to predict what will happen in the future and it also takes into consideration the knowledge of the various concepts that you know about the forex markets that it can help you interpret what the price or the market is saying at every point in time why the fundamental analysis takes into consideration the economic factor, the economic strength of the particular region that you are trading their, 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 their currency. So people say, I'm a fundamental trader, I'm a technical trader. You now see what makes them different. You now see what differentiates them. Now, you can be a technical trader and be a fundamental trader at the same time. And I want to believe that's what the goal of this of this um chain of this bootcamp is all about. So that you won't just depend on one one form of analysis. You can combine the two together and it will help you refine your decision. It will help you filter your decision well. So that's that on um the types of analysis that we have. Um I'll, I'll, I'll move to the second second section now, which talks about the the chart patterns. Can we all see my my um, trading view screen? Can we all see my trading view screen? No, sir. We're still on the old screen. On the old screen. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. please uh, I usually have issues with this thing okay you should be able to see my GU screen now yes yes sir, it's loading we can see it now okay So let's go to chart patterns. What are chart patterns? Chart patterns just is, is just the pattern of the market, the pattern of the price, how price moves. That's what chart pattern means. And there are several chart patterns. The reason why we are we are treating this chart pattern, I know there is a lot of um a lot of school of thought about chart patterns, how that is not is not um, useful. In trading the game, how that people don't really need it to make to inform their decision. But I need to tell you this that um it may be needed, it may be useful to have a knowledge of what we are talking about now, and then you may not need it. The fact that it's useful doesn't mean it's not needed, and the fact that it's useful doesn't mean it's, it's needed. What am I trying to say? It's important for you to have the holistic view of the forex market to help you filter and refine your decision, your forex decision, your trade decisions. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So don't just don't just take your eyes off um, what I'm trying to what I will try to share with us now. Uh, I know it has caused a lot of people pain. I know a lot of people have burnt their account as a result of um, focusing on it. The reason why you are burning your account is because you are focusing on it alone. But as this bootcamp progresses, as we move forward in this 
bootcamp, you will see why you've been burning your account. You see why you've been you've been blowing your account. You will see what you've been doing wrong. And I bet it with you, if you don't understand these chart patterns well, you may not be able to see the importance and the benefits of what you will be taught after today. Do we understand? So basically, there are two different types of chart patterns. We have the excuse me. Chart patterns. And like I said, we have two different types of chart patterns. We have the reversal. Reversal patterns. We also have the continuation patterns. We have the reversal chart patterns and we have the continuation chart patterns. Now, under the reversal chart patterns, You'll be seeing, I'll be drawing them so that you can see them. Reversal pattern. Let's let's talk about the reversal pattern now. The first one I'll be talking about in the reversal pattern is the bearish double top. The bearish double. If you have your notes, please, you can write. A bearish double top, and I will draw it on the screen now for everyone to see. So I will call it M. People have different names. I call it the bearish. Double top. And usually, what most of the people use this um, this chart pattern to predict is to look out for sell opportunities. So usually when you see when you see a when you see a, a chart formation like this, most people usually um will want to enter here. Where is this? Uh come here, please. Let me use this, let me use this, let me use this. So most people will want to enter here. Most people want to place their trade here. Why some will wait for price to break this neck and then place their trade here? We are not saying this thing is bad, but as we progress, you will see why this trading trading with just this pattern alone won't be effective and you will see why it will be making you blow your account and that's why we are treating it that's why we are we are we are, we are looking at it so that you will understand how it works and how it will help and not help you so please if you have your pen or your jotters or your journal it will be good for you to 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 write this down this is the bearish double top pattern. We also have another pattern called bearish head and shoulder pattern. Coming. Bearish head and shoulder pattern. And these are this is.
as the shoulder. This is the head. The shoulder and then down we go down we go this is the neck this is the neck sorry this is the neck Is the bearish bearish on um, shoulder at so for this pattern most people <laughs> you know I've, I've I've traded with this pattern very very well <laughs> and then I used to burn my account. It's, it's a painful story, but uh, thank God for knowledge and all now. Then, once we see this pattern forming, we just come and wait for it here. Yeah, let me let me draw a line so that you can see. <laughs> we just come here, wait for it, yeah, and then we shoot our shots, and then we enter here. And for those that call themselves conservative trader, you just see them, they will enter here. And at times, you just see that market will just come like this. Eat out everybody stops. Then, now go your direction. Come down. It's usually very, very painful, but you will see why markets does these things like this you will see as as we progress in this boot camp you will see why it's it's always like like this another pattern is um the rising wedge now do i draw this okay let me let me move it let me use here the rising wedge the rising wedge The rising wedge. Then you just see how. Um, in this case, most people, this is where they shoot their shots. Or wait for price to break that wedge, then come back to retest this place. They enter. And then when they enter, there are times that you now see the market will now come take out this this so-called welch and then come down and sells down you will see why markets behaves like this as we move on so i'm trying to make you not disabuse your mind when it comes to chart pattern it will help if you have a good understanding of chart pattern it will help you see the manipulations happening in the market and how to play safe 
and right with the main trend. But if you don't understand this thing, you will see the manipulations happening in the market, and then you may fall victim of the manipulations. Do we understand? So let me move to um, let me move to. Of course, this is the bearish double top, the bearish double bottom too. Same pattern, just that is the inverse inverse dimension of it. And for this, you just see that this is the neck. This is the neck. So once, once this happens like this, some people, some people will target this second um, second bottom and enter here. And enter here. Some will target here. Some wait for break of this place, this this neck, a retest and enter had a retest. And even after the retest, you now see the market will after this retest like this. Market cannot do like this. Market cannot behave like this. And then come back to take out this this so-called double bottom and then move up. And the people will say, ah, they are, they are watching them, they are looking at them, they are doing this, they are doing that. You will see why market behaves like this as we move forward. So I'm, ju I'm just trying to show us so that we're going to understand how, how this thing works. I think I would like to stop on chat patterns like this. I don't want to dwell so much on it. It's just for you to see how these guys manipulate the market. That's just the importance of, of, of these chart patterns. So now let's move to the main thing, the major discourse for the day, which is the market structure. This is chart patterns. Look on it, please. Okay, let me just, let me just put it aside. Hold on, please. This chart patterns. Let's move to market structure now, which is the most important subject for the day. But before we move into it, um, my power holding company just took our light, so let me just switch to to the alternative source. market structure background okay give me just one minute let me switch to the alternative um, power supply please thanks
Okay, I'm back. Are you guys still with me? Okay, let me know. Are you are you enjoying the class yes, so far okay, before okay. we delve into the main discourse for the day? Are you guys enjoying the class? I'm waiting for your response before I move on. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. So let's 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 talk on market structure. If you've not been paying attention before, I would just like you to pay good attention now. Because what you want to discuss now is the foundation of what you'll be doing later when it comes to forex analysis. If you don't understand market structure, in my own opinion, there's no how you can be a profitable trader. If you don't have a good understanding of market structure, there's no how. In my opinion, you can be a profitable forex trader. One of the most important skills you need as a trader is the ability to read and understand the structure of the market. What does market, let, let me even start from there. What does market structure really mean? It's just the study of the market behavior the study of the anatomy of the market, the study of the structure of the markets. And a good understanding of this market structure will help you to see how traders behave in the markets. If you don't understand what market structure is, you won't see, you won't know how traders behave in the markets. You won't know what the majority are doing. You won't know what the minority are doing. You will know who is in the control of the market, whether it's the buyers or the sellers. You will know the right time to place a trade. You will know the right time to exit your market. You will even know when to stay away from the market. Is that important when it comes to this, the, 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 the subjects of market structure? Now, we need to understand that price moves in a structural pattern. Let me let me let me write it down for you so you see price moves in a structural pattern as the first point that you need to hold on to in this in this for this class that price doesn't just move anyhow price, price doesn't just move haphazardly there is a definite structure for price movement there is a definite structure there's a definite way that price moves there is a definite language that the price is saying when it's moving if you don't know it you don't know it and if you know it you know it that's just one thing about this market structure it's that important i mean that important now when I say market moves in a structural pattern, yes, it moves in a structural pattern, and it's what it is. However, these structural patterns are divided into three, and we'll be looking at the three patterns of the movement of the market this night. Are you all with me? So the first pattern we're going to be looking at is the buy trend. The buy trend. A buy trend. And what is a buy trend? A buy trend is simply the formation of higher highs and higher lows. As if it's not complicated at all. <laughs> at all, at all. It's not complicated at all is as simple as that what is a buy trend a buy trend is simply the formation of higher highs and higher lows which of course indicates that the market is up trending which indicates market 
please do i need to type all this do i need to type all this at the market is uptrending which indicates that the market is up trading in fact when you understand this you don't need any indicator to decide if the market is bullish or bearish once you open your chart like this just a visual observation of the price action is enough for you to get an idea of what the market trend is and now we are saying we are looking at the buy trend now we say buy trend is the formation of higher highs and then higher lows which indicates that the market is uptrending what do i mean by this formation of higher highs where do i start from let me start from here higher highs and higher lows This is what we call the buy trend or the uptrend, the formation of higher highs and higher lows. What are higher highs? Let me show you. Higher highs. Higher highs, and then higher lows. This is what we call a buy trend now in a buy trend please listen to what i want to say now in a buy trend we are discussing market structure and i said price moves in a structural pattern and how that we discuss that buy in the structural patterns are divided into three and one of the patterns is what we are discussing at the buy trend and i said for buy trend is simply the formation of higher highs and higher lows which indicates that market is uptrending. Usually, the buy trend is usually the combination of the impulsive and the retracement. What do I mean by the impulsive? The impulsive move. The impulsive move. Let me let me show you. Let me just denote it. This is the impulsive move. This is the impulsive move. And this is the retracement. I will explain later. Please just, just leave to me. Uh, and this is the retracement. This is the retracement. The impulsive move is the move that breaks the previous higher high. So look at this. This is the higher high. This is the higher low. This, the move that breaks the previous higher high, which happens to be this, is the impulsive move. 
So we can say this is another impulsive move here. This is another impulsive move here. Because this move broke this last higher high. Please, am I communicating? Can we all understand what I'm trying to say, please? If you guys are with me, say hi. Let me know we are together. Hi. Please, are you guys getting what I'm what I'm what I'm sharing with you guys? Are you getting what I'm saying? Hi. Yes. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Yes. Following. Can you hear me? Hi, hi. Yes. Okay. So any move that breaks the previous higher high is the impulsive move. And any move that attempts to come back to the previous higher high is the retracement. Although it doesn't come back to that exact point, exact point every time. But it will attempt to come back to touch it. So this is the higher high one, higher high, higher load one, higher high two, higher load two. So look at this move, this first move that broke this high, this 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 point that broke the last higher high. This is the last higher high. Let me highlight it. This is the last higher high. This is the last higher low. So this move, this first move, broke this last higher high. So this is impulsive move. And you see that there was an attempt to come back into that higher high. That's the retracement. And then you see another higher high again that was formed. And another higher low again that was formed. And then another move broke this higher high that was formed to make it a previous higher high. So you can see this move broke this last higher high. So this is the impulsive move. The move that attempts to come back to the higher high, to the last higher high that, that this impulsive move broke out from is the higher low. Highlighting them. Are we on the same page? So now, in a buy trend, this listing, in a buy trend, in a buy trend, the most important, I mean, the most important points in the buy trend is your higher low. I will tell you why. The most important, let me now delete all these ones. Let me delete all these ones. The most important point in your higher high, in your buy trend, I mean, is your higher low. Why is it your higher low? Because it's the point that helps you see if this buy trend is going to change to a sell trend. So what, I'm, what am I trying to say? Because this last higher low is the most important point, if price mistakenly breaks this last higher low, mistakenly comes down below it and close below it, then I know that this buy trend is about to change to a sell trend. Am I communicating? So this is this this is the buy trend now. This is the last higher low, and I said that the most important point in your buy trend is your last higher low. So let's assume that price wants to form the higher low. Couldn't form it. Couldn't go 
above the last higher low and then this guy mistakenly comes down here like this and closes below this last higher low and closes below this last higher low then we can say that this buy trend is changing to a sell trend why because there is a break of the buy structure this is the buy structure formation of higher high higher low higher high higher low higher higher low higher high higher low and this guy couldn't form a new higher high this was the last higher high point it couldn't form a new higher high and then because of the um because of the pressure of the sellers this guy sold down below this last higher low then there is a break of structure some people call it bos POS. Are we getting me? Now, let me pause here so that I don't go ahead of myself. And let me talk, let's talk about the sell trend now. As we move on, you will see why I asked us to stop and move to this, this, this sell trend. This is a buy trend. Like I told you, it's, it's, a, it's a pattern. It's part of the three patterns I talked about the other time. This is a buy trend. Now let's go to the sell trend. The sell trend. The sell trend. So what was the sell trend? Based on what I said about the buy trend, can someone now tell me what the sell trend is? Based on our discussion on the buy trend, can someone tell me what the sell trend is? You can unmute yourself and tell me what the think, trend is based on what you I said think, about I the think it's the um, formation of um, lower highs and lower lows. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So a sell trend is the formation of lower highs. and lower lows which indicates that the market or price is down trending That's your sell trend for you. Coming. Let me just make it shorter. That's your sell trend for you. And based on the explanation on this, if you want to draw the sell trend now, how will you draw the sell trend? Based on this explanation that we give. The drawing of this sell trend will be like this. The lower high, the lower low, sorry. Don't mind my drawing, no. It's just to make it clear and give us a better picture of what you're seeing. The lower half, low. The lower. 
lower high, lower low, lower high. Now, someone will ask me, why are we calling this guy higher high? We are calling it higher high because it's higher than the last high. And we are calling it higher low because it's higher than the last low. The same thing applies to this. Lower high. Lower low. Lower low. Why? This is lower than this high. And this is lower than this low. That's the mechanism behind it. You don't need to cram it. Once you see the price movement, you will know that this is how this thing is. So let's move to the next lower high. And then the next lower low. And then the next lower high. And then the next lower low. Of course. So this is it. This is it. Now, for your downtrend, the most important point for you for your downtrend, just like I said here, that the most important, let me even write it down for those that are depending on what I'm writing. Higher low. And then for the sell trend, the most important point here is the lower high. I will tell you why. Is the lower high why because if this guy if this sell trend wants to change to a buy trend you will know how you will know is when price moves above this last higher low This last higher low. That's why it's a very, very important point. Don't joke with this point in your sell trend. It's what makes you see and what makes you know that a trend is about to change from one structural pattern to another. Sorry, you said higher low. Higher low. Which yes. one? Is, a, is that not lower high? Abby? This is lower high, lower low, lower okay. high, lower low. Yeah, yeah. It's a mistake. By who? I think by you. You mistakenly said higher low, so I was confused. So this lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. 
So whatever makes this guy, whatever makes this guy, there are times that it may not even be able to cross this last lower high. And then you, you see that pattern for me now. Can you see that pattern for me? The one we talked about. What was here? This is the M, right? Right? This is the M here, right? And what is this? What are you guys seeing here? This same pattern we discussed here is what you are seeing here. And this same pattern we discussed here is what you are seeing here. The bearish double top that you are seeing here, that you are seeing here as a reversal pattern, it's what formed here. Are we understanding how these things now connect to each other? Now, once this guy, once this guy breaks out of this last lower high, then you know that this guy wants to change to a buy trend. But you don't just jump into trade anyhow. That's how people get caught in the web. In the web, you don't just jump into trade anyhow. There are things that you see. There are things that serve as evidences for you to be sure that yes, this guy actually wants to sell or this guy actually wants to start buying. And these are things that you will be discussing in the next sessions. My own assignment here is to make you see and understand the market structure. So this is the buy trend. This is the sell trend. This that happened here is what you call the break of structure. BOS, the break of what? Of structure. So in this move now, where is the impulsive move? This is the impulsive move. This is the impulsive move. This move. Let me let me let me let me show you. That's the impulsive move. Because this is the move that broke the low, the previous low. Yeah, because it's a buy trend, the move that broke the previous high is the impulsive move. But for the sell trend, the move that broke the impulsive low is this impulsive move. And the retracement is the move that attempts to go back to the last low. As you can see, this guy attempts to go back to the last lower high. And then another impulsive move broke this low. So this is another impulsive move now. This is another impulsive move. So this is the retracements. This is the retracements. This guy. Is the retracement. Where you see the arrow pointing to is the retracement. Do we understand? And then the last one is the ranging or the consolidating markets. The ranging. The ranging of consolidating markets. And how, how, how does how does what, what what does a ranging of consolidating markets mean? It's very simple. The 
Luigi Markets. Moves in a horizontal direction of form. Hello, please. I have a question. I will take questions, sir. I will take questions. Let me let me finish, sir. I will take questions. We have buyers and sellers. Keep knocking price. Back and forth. The support and the resistance level. As a ranging market, guys. Come in, please. As a ranging market. And if you want to if you want to illustrate this graphically now, then you say um, uh, if you want to illustrate this graphically, then you can say let's say this is the resistance level. This is the support level i know most of you some of you will be will be conversant with support and resistance so that point where you see markets bouncing off from the support and resistance and there are times that even this this ranging market can be forming structures can be forming a series of higher highs and higher lows just within the support and resistance what am i saying you may see that this guy may just be forming like this but it's, it's within the support and resistance Trying to rush. Then you see that it bounces back. What am I trying to say in summary? Even in the ranging market, you can have higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows also in the ranging market. It now depends on the lower time frame that you are looking at. It depends on the lower time, the higher the time frame, I mean. That you are looking at but what does the ranging market basically means it is an horizontal movement of the market where buyers and sellers keep knocking price back and forth you can see back and forth from support and resistance this is the resistance Is the support 
as simple as ABC. So these are the two, the three um, price or market structural patterns in which price moves as simple as ABC. Now we've talked about the buy trend, we've talked about the sell trend, we've talked about the ranging market, the um, bouncing back and forth of price from uh, support and the resistance. Now, let me tell you where your highest probability trade lies. Because this is break of structure, we are talking about market structure, so I think it's important for us to talk about this. Where your highest and most probability trade setup is, is the exact break of structure and a retest. What do I mean? This higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. This guy could not form a new II. There was a break of structure. So this is the last higher high, right? Break of structure. This guy broke this last higher low. So a retest. And then the move begins. That's your most probability change. And for these two, a retest, this is a break of structure. A retest. And then the move begins. However, when you guys graduate to the smart money concept, you will understand how this retest, how this break and retest uh, is related to the smart money concept where you don't, you don't just enter any out, even at the break and retest of any trend. There are things that you watch out for. But I'm just showing us how a typical market structure looks like. And I want to believe with this, I have been able to make, to do justice to market structure session. However, when you're talking about market structure, you need to understand that the higher your time frame, the stronger it becomes. So, for example, if I'm seeing a structure formation on a daily time frame, then I know that it is a strong bias for that asset or currency. You can now come down to the lower time frame and filter out your entries. I'm not talking about entries now because I feel it's not yet time. The time is not yet ripe for me to talk about entry when you've not discussed about the smart money concept. But this is how a typical market structure looks like. The buy trend, the sell trend, the consolidation. The consolidation. Now, the last thing I will talk about before I move forward is the candlestick formation. Imagine this market structure and candlestick formation because at every structural point, based on experience and observations, I've noticed that there are several candlestick formation that happens at these several structural points. We call all these points structural points. Higher high is a structural point. Higher low is a structural point. Higher high is a structural point. Higher low is a structural point. Lower high is a structural point. Lower low is a structural point. Lower high, lower low. They are all structural points. So at every of these structural points, most of the time, there are candlestick formations that happens at these structural points. And this is what we'll be talking about now to wrap up the session for today. So I will say candlestick formations on structural points. So the first I will talk about is the two to a top and two to a bottom. What do I mean by this? Excuse me, let me put here. Two to a top and two to a bottom. What do I mean by this? The first is the two to a top. Uh, 
Now, how does this guy look like? Very, very simple. Let me draw my candlestick. Okay, or should I Google it? Let me Google it so that it will be fast. At least you'll be able to see it. So to a top. And this information. Ah, uh, oh, this guy is showing me. Okay, I think this is one. I just hope it will work. Okay, can you guys see this? Can you guys see this, my new new window? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, I'm coming, please. I don't want to start drawing so that it won't take our time. Can you see this these tweezers? They actually called tweezers bottom. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Can you see this this is this is a candlestick formation? This is a candlestick formation. And actually, this is not how they look like on the chart. Basically, most of the time they have equal weeks. They have equal weeks. The, the green and the red can do. They have equal weeks. So this is two to a um, bottom, and this is two to a top. Candlestick formation. On structural points. Then, of course, we have the shooting star. I want to believe we all know shooting star. Okay. Can you all see this? Can you all yes, see where yes, my cursor is? This is a shooting star. These are candlestick formations that you find as structural points. So, two to a top, two to a bottom, shooting star, then um, the hammer. candlestick formation it's just the opposite of the um shooting star this is the armor can we see it can we see this please yes yeah, yes we can see the it foolish armor this is the hammer candlestick formation then um uh, engulfing patterns i just hope that google will give me a better it better okay i think this is it. can you all see this can you all see this yes yes we see it okay engulfing pattern occurs when after a bullish candle a big buy candle swallows up that bullish candle and another candle forms so this is a this is this is a this is a sell candle after the sell candle a buy candle formed irrespective of the time frame that you are checking this from as far as this time frame is concerned this is a valid bullish engulfing and this is a valid bullish and bearish engulfing so if a sell candle sellers came up they couldn't take price below this point and then buyers came in a can a big candle formed swallowed up this last sell and then another candle formed again. 
which happens to be a buy, and then it continues. So this point, this point is a structural point. Same applies to the bearish uh, trend. A bullish, a bullish candle, a big um, sell candle, bearish candle, another bearish candle form. This point is a structural point. Engulfing candlestick pattern. Then the second to the last is three in formation. Tripping formation, tripping formation, tripping formation, tripping formation. All of these guys doing. I'm trying to check the better, a better. Uh, Call me, please. Tripping formation. I'm coming, please. Let me let me check. The tripping formation is also a candlestick formation, candlestick pattern that you find structural points. Okay, let, let me show this on the on the charts. Very pay information. Please take note of that. Let, let's let's keep that. Then the real I hope I will find this railroad track here. Railroad track. I don't find out this I will I will draw. Okay. Can you all see this? Can you all see this? Okay. Yes, we this see this is a bearish railway track is a structural point when you find points like this that aligns to higher highs and higher and higher this is higher high this is higher low they are strong structural points they are they will likely end as structural points now let me go and draw let me draw my uh pin formation it's so simple, just three candles. With equal weeks. Come oh, please. I wish I could find it. Okay, let me let me let me present this so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So this is supposed to be equal. Don't mind the a drawing though. Almost equal weeks too. This suggests that this zone is a rejection zone. 
and when it aligns with where uh, you 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 think higher high can be, then it will be a strong structural point. This is a therapy information. Very candles with equal weeks. When you find them around structural points, they are viable. When you find them in your charts, they are viable structural points. So we talked of we talked about the let me list them for you. Although I may not be able to draw, but at least let me list. I believe as you watch the video, you'll be able to to get uh, this. I showed you guys. So shooting star Emma. engulfing patterns creeping formation railroad track these are candlestick formation and structural points so I think I would like to take questions from here now I would like to take questions from here. Questions, please. Questions, please. Okay, we don't have questions. Are we saying we can go? Are we saying I can go? No, no, there's question. Okay, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. You are you are you the one coordinating the question and answer? Yes. Yes. I'm here to support, sir. Okay. Please stop. I'm handing over to you then. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, Pastor Havila. Thank you so much for that um, insightful class. And um, guys, if you have questions, please write them on the chat box. If you can speak, you can also ask the question. Um, Mr. Nasbo, you can go through. You can ask your question. Okay, sir. Sir, you spoke about um, reversal and continuation patterns. Or the chart yeah. patterns. Yes, yes. Oh, so, yes, yes. yeah, under the reversal patterns, you talked about the bearing double top, the bearing head and shoulder pattern, the rising wedge, the bearing double bottom, bottom patterns. So, you didn't speak about the continuation pattern. I'm sorry. I didn't speak about the continuation pattern. I didn't speak about the continuation pattern because of our time. Uh, okay. So, um, chance, head of us, what do you think? Should I just give a view, a brief overview? Uh, we have to draw. That's the yes, if you can, if you can, um, if you can briefly rush through it in the next two in two minutes, um, we can do that. Okay. Can you all see my chat? Are you seeing my chat? Yes. Okay, these are reversal patterns. This one we did here. They are reversal patterns. Now let's let's do continuation patterns. Continuation patterns simply means okay price is selling and then all of a sudden is buying how do you know when it will continue selling that's what this language forget about this big english what this reversal pattern means okay what this reversal pattern means is that okay price is buying and it wants to start selling how do we know that it will start selling what sign what patterns should we see to make us know that this guy wants to start selling you understand but for continuation pattern okay price is it has been buying and all of a sudden we are seeing a sharp sell what should we see to make us know that this guy will still buy back that's what we'll be discussing now so let me use uh let me start with the bullish flag pattern My challenge is the joy. <laughs> Bullish flat pattern. For some of you that you are conversant with it, you should. So this guy bought 
and all of a sudden we are seeing a kind of a downward movement. And then it continues to buy. Bullish flag. And let me talk about uh, um, okay. What I would do is this. What I will do is this, so that I won't waste time because I, this drawing and everything, I will, I will, I will check out. I will look out for a picture. I will let me even check online to be able to see. So okay, so while while you are looking for that, let's just treat some some questions that we have here on the chat. Yeah. Um, the ones that you've already went through, I'll try and just summarize what you said. Okay. Um, the first one we have from it's from Mr. Basil Ede. He says, um, "I hope in one of the sessions we'll go through the real charts to see how it looks like." So don't worry okay. about that. The coming classes we're going to be talking about um, trading strategies, um, and there we will be we will be on the charts. So we just want to give you this theory. So that's why it's very important you pay attention now. So that when we talk about these things and you see them on the chat, you are able to identify what we are talking about. More especially um, the fact that it's it's normally on the charts, it's not as clear as um, we try to illustrate it to you here. So we would just want you to get the idea here. And then once we talk about these things on the chat, you will see them uh, live and you will pick them up. Um, the next question we have is for um, Omitade. And he says, you earlier talked about um, chart patterns. So he wants to know if trading chart patterns only can be profitable. Um, I don't know. I, I know you spoke about this, um, but you can actually just recap on that as well, just okay. in a minute or so. OK, thank you very much. Trading chart pattern is not, what was the question again? So that I will put it the way she put it to me. Please kindly repeat the question. <laughs> I will, I will yeah. want to answer the way she asked the question. Let me. Yes. Yeah, so, so you earlier talked about chart patterns. Trading okay. only chart patterns can it be profitable? Okay, dear Omita de Yinka, trading chart patterns only can never be profitable. Why? Chart patterns are manipulation strategies. I hope that's clear. Chart patterns are manipulation strategies. If you are following only chart patterns, you will keep getting yourself stopped out. Almost most of the time, you will keep your get yourself getting stopped out. And that's why all this information are very cheap because they are not sustainable. If you go online now and check chart patterns, you will see that I've, I've been able to even download one now. You will see a lot of chart patterns. If it's that easy, then people should be profitable with the available information. But they are not profitable, meaning it's not, it's not sustainable. Chart patterns are manipulation strategies. As you progress in this, in this boot camp, you will understand what I'm trying to say. That's why I said we are trying to show you so that you will be able to position yourself where not to, be, not to get caught in the web of the manipulation. That's just it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, then the next question here is from Emmanuel from Nigeria. He says, please, sir, how can I be sure to catch more than three times or three times pips of my stop loss? So um, what you're asking about, Mr. Emmanuel, is risk to reward ratio. And that's something that we're also going to be discussing further 
um, in, in the bootcamp. So it's not related to this topic. So just please um, note that down is risk to reward ratio. Um, and that is something that we will treat very, very importantly. It's a very important topic, this one. Um, then I have another question here which says, which time frames um, do we, which time frame are we to determine the trend of the market? So um, again, I, I know you touched on this, but you can just elaborate again on it. Okay. Higher time frames, structural patterns on higher time frames are very, very good for your biases. I mean, they are very the best because they hold the solid ground. They take they take longer time to form, and when they take longer time to form, it should tell you that something is happening to that market, to that price formation. There is something that wants to come out of that price formation. So if you can position yourself well with structural patterns from higher time frame. And just go to lower time frame to find to look for entries. You will most of the time eat your take profits. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We don't have any other questions right right now. Um, are there any other questions, guys? Okay, I have another one here. Please, can you help me recap the answer on trading chart pattern? Is it uh, profitable? I was kicked out by network. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Pastor, they want you to recap again on that, um, what, what you explained that uh, trading chat patterns only is not profitable. Okay, dear Omita De Yinka, I said it the other time that trading chat patterns alone can never make you profitable. Why? chart patterns are manipulation strategies i repeat chart patterns are manipulation strategies we are only teaching you not so that you can use it but so that you will use the knowledge to position yourself where in a way that you won't get caught up in the trap and you will position yourself in a way that you will flow with the real trend and that is what you'll be learning in the days to come so that's why we are teaching you this. We are not teaching you so that you can use it. We are teaching you so that you can have a good knowledge of how it works so that you will position yourself well to avoid getting caught in the web of manipulation. Chart patterns are manipulation strategies. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, sir. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Um, okay, I have another one here. I have another one from um, Mr. Emmanuel. Say, so sir, most of the time, the four hour time frame work against the daily time frame, and the one week time frame works against uh, the monthly. In such situations, what do I do? Um, okay, I, I, I don't think they do. <laughs> Go for it, sir. <laughs> Okay, uh, you see, in situations like that, I, I understand what, what you're trying to say, but you need to understand that uh, when when higher time frame formations are, 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 how do I put it, how do I put this now? Higher time frame formation, for higher time frame formation to form, there must be lower time frame formations. Do you understand? And most of the time, what you are seeing as a buy, in higher time frame formation, there must be a sell trend in lower time frame formation. But because we don't understand what we call this market structure, we think they conflict each other. For example, for example, if a market is retracing, if a market is retracing on a higher time frame, if you go to a lower time frame, you will see series a long trend of sell, a long, a long, um, a long bias for sell trend. But that's the retracement on higher time frame. If you don't look at higher time frame and you are looking for sales in lower time frame because you are seeing a long bias for sale, when that retrace ends in higher time frame, you will get caught up in the web in, on lower time frame. That's why you need to understand your positioning. And that's what this market structure attempts to communicate to you. 
as you move further in the session, like I said, most of our questions will be addressed by other sessions. As we move further in the boot camp, we'll get to understand. That's why you will now appreciate what you've learned today. Now, thank you. Okay, thank you. And we have another question, which is quite similar, right? Um, but it's something you mentioned um, from Edris Mohammed. He's, it says, um, Sir, you said something like check market structure in the higher time frame and then go to smaller time frame. Uh, please, how? Basically, elaborate on that. Okay. I said you should check, check your structure on higher time frame and go to lower time frame to to look for your entries because you don't have the capital to accommodate entries on higher time frame. So the best place you can go to reduce your stop loss value, which of course we reflect in your capital, is to go to lower time frame and flow with the direction of the structure of the higher time frame. This is something you will learn as you proceed also. Like I said, most of your questions will be answered by the subsequent sessions you understand so that's exactly what i mean i'm telling you to move to lower time frame because i know your capital may not be able to hold the stop loss value for higher time frame thank you okay okay thank you guys um i'm not seeing any other questions okay um mr emmanuel again say in synthetic indices and currency pairs which pay more <laughs> 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 are you sure you answer this slide <laughs> Um, so, so just a brief answer, right? And and again, not really related to to the session. Um, so so you will learn different markets. Um, so we learn all of this analysis, which is applicable both in indices, synthetic indices, as well as currencies. And um, you will then go and choose. I think we discussed this on one of the previous ones. You need to choose between the two or assets right which work best for you and depending when you get those assets that work best for you you might find that boom and crash you're able to make more profit on boom and crash than you are in with euro usd um just because of the time frames maybe because you you go to work at eight in the morning until five so it's it's there are varying varying um um influences to that right however um i think pastor dami yesterday was mentioning how we as smart money traders trade the london session and the asian session which is between 6 a.m and 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 six in the evening and and you might find that you normally have time then and you can be able to fully utilize and trade currencies and and at that point you might find that you are more profitable when you're you're trading currencies um but then that said also um currencies is where we have the re that's the real market as opposed to synthetic which is um which is algorithms which mimic the the real market so if you can master the currencies um at the end of the day that's where the real movements happen and for most people, they are able to make more money there as, as opposed to synthetic indices. Um, but let's, let's look at all of the, of the things that we, the, the strategies that we're going to learn in going forward, as well as um, learning the differences between synthetic indices and um, currencies and how to trade them. Then you'll be able to understand it going forward and figure out which one works best for you. Um, I think I've, I've answered that one. Um, and then I've got another question here. Is the training going to include synthetic indices? Yes, 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 sir. Um, so in the bootcamp or with VTN, we mostly trade synthetic indices and currencies. That's correct, sir. 
and now it says please is smart money concept included in this bootcamp yes uh, we we keep on saying that we are smart traders right we trade smart money however we are not there yet we we have people who are new um who are new traders and we need to make sure that we cover the basics like i said when we start um going into the charts people need to know what we are talking about so we don't have to stop and explain these things but yes smart money is a very 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 big and integral part of this bootcamp um do we have any other questions um, sir, please, can you go through the candlestick formation for us candlestick formation functions um i think we we've covered that which one specifically i don't just know how how they work how they affect the structural points mm. okay so um as as pastor havila was explaining these um these are patterns that form as structural points right so um, he mentioned the most important thing is this market structure. And here on this market structure, at these areas where you have your higher highs, your higher lows, your double tops, your double bottoms, that's where you will find these candlestick patterns forming. They can form any other place, but when you see these candlestick patterns forming at this um, market structures or, or structural points that's where you know how to utilize them and then he said again that these candlestick patterns uh, are traps that's how a uh, uh, trap formation so you know how to to not be caught in the market's trap when you see these things forming and and that's something as well that we will elaborate when we talk about um the smart money concept so this is not something that you should be looking to trade sir you, you should not be looking to say, if I see this, I'm going to take a trade. No, no, sir. Um, it's just so that you know that when you see this thing, this is a, this is a, a, a structural, um, it, it's forming at a structural point. And then later on, later on, you will understand how we trade and how we, we use it to know how to avoid um, falling into traps that the market sets. I, I hope yeah. I've, I've answered your question there, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? If we don't have any other question, let's just quickly drop a 111 for Pasta Havila there. Mr. I Snipes, um, it was a beautiful session, and and thank you guys for attending. Can we please drop just a one 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 day um, for our beautiful pastor there for giving us his time? Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Um, and in the absence of any other questions, we'll call this session, and let's. And let's meet to to again tomorrow. Thank you guys. Thank you. I see there's there's too many. I'm I'm also sending my one 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 there. Let's please inbox him as well and just um, appreciate him for taking his time to take us through these things. And we'll meet again tomorrow. It's the same time. Thank you guys. Have a have a blessed evening.